You see what happened here? Take a look back at verse number one. How did Jehoshaphat get himself in this predicament? Because some of you are asking yourself, how did I get myself here? How did I get myself in a place where I'm I go, bit off more than I could share? It's not important what you feel. It's important what you do after what you feel. Alarmed, he inquired of the Lord. Well, you can't pray if you have fear because you know, there's no fear of faith and fear. Well, can I tell you something? I'd rather have you pray afraid than pray fake. Like you can shabba dabba do your whole life long and never have faith. Can I just say? I'm, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal boy. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. I have all the gifts of the spirit. I have samurai tongues. I Sometimes what we call spiritual warfare is just working ourselves up into a sweat. And the devil just waits till we're tired out and then he hits us again. Hey, I believe in spirit. And I, love, I pray with passion. I believe in praying with passion. Can I tell you something? But I believe praying fit, afraid too. I believe worshiping afraid because Jehoshaphat said, hey, it's not enough for me to work. Listen, it's not the leader's job to do all the praying. It's when all the people get together. What happened after that? Well, some people will leave you after that. But you know the people who are really with you. When you get afraid and you pray, and after that, there's some people that leave. But the people that stay after that, those are the people that are ready to fight with you. I told you all the things that Jehoshaphat did. He broke old alliances. Now he established justice. He established truth. He put priests in place, and he began to establish worship over the nation. Verse number 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Look at this. And after this... The Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Meonites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Now right there, you can just stop right there and you can understand a lot about where you are right now. After this, after this, after that, after what? After he did the right thing, after that he got attacked. You know, some of you think, well, you know, if you just do the right thing, the right thing will happen to you. What goes around comes around. No, that's not true. Because the devil comes to test whether you believe what God said is true or not. That's why you get a prophetic word and the exact opposite thing happens and then you go and you call the prophet a false prophet. He's not a false prophet. Well, you said I was going to be prosperous and I lost my job after that. Well, what happened after that? Well, God told me if I prayed for my husband, he'd get saved. And after that, he committed adultery. Okay, what happened after that? God told me that he would save my whole household, and after that, my kids started going crazy. Well, what happened after that? God told me that by his stripes I'm healed, and after that, I got sick. Well, what happened after that? You see, we stop moving forward after the after that of the devil, and we don't wait for the after that of God. And some of you are living in the after that, and God's trying to show you what's after that. That's right. That's right. Well, I obeyed God and I came to Orlando. Well, what happened after that? Well, you don't want to talk about it. Well, let me tell you, I want to talk about what happens after that. <laughs> well, we bought a new building and look what happened after that. Well, I want to tell you what's going to happen after that because I just told you what was going to happen after that. <laughs> you see, I really think we give the devil too much credit. That's right. That's he really right. plays into God's hand. We think we play into the devil's hand. Oh, I made a mistake. I played into the devil's hand. Oh, no, the devil played into God's hand. Because the place where the devil does, what the devil does after that, he thinks he's got us where we, he wants us. But after that, God's got him where he wants him. It's true. He's not very smart. The Bible says that the rulers of this age would have known they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. That means the devil could take back the cross. He would do it. But guess what? It's after that. Well, I got Jesus where I want him. He's been over. Whipping him with the cat and nine tails. I got him 40 times. I got him down where I want him. But what happens after that is by his stripes I'm healed. I like that. Don't stop in the after that that you're living in. Go for the after that that God, after that that God has for you. Because when the devil had Jesus on the cross and he was putting nails in his hands and he put a spear in his side and now his blood is flowing out. He says, I got him now. There's no life in his blood. And the father's standing the back going, oh no, because after that his blood gives life to everyone on the earth. That's what happens after that. You see, he puts him in the tomb, and for three days he said, Now I got him right where I want him. But after that, three days later, after that, 
When he comes back with the keys of hell, death and the grave, the devil's going, what's going to happen after that? There is no after that for you, devil. It is finished. That's the last after that. See? When Jesus said it's finished, there's no more after that anymore. It's already after that. Some of you need to look and see what's after the after that that you're Somebody doesn't get a word or, and a strategy for victory until somebody gets afraid enough to pray, gets afraid enough to worship. If you gotta be, if you if you're gonna worship, the, if you have to be afraid, then worship afraid. If you gotta pray, pray afraid. Do whatever you gotta do. But I'm telling you something. God hears afraid prayers. He he hears afraid work. Can you tell me something? Which is more meaningful to God? If you're coming. To, to church and everything is perfect in your life and you're thanking God that everything's perfect or all hell is breaking loose in your life but you're thanking God anyway. Which of those is more meaningful to God? I think he loves them both. But I think there's something in that heart just like that, that woman who gave a little, little bit of all that she had. He said, listen, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who sees that perspective and so someone rises up and has a word. Here's what this, this prophet rises up and says, listen, the enemy is coming against you for sure. In verse number 16, it says, tomorrow, I like that, because God knows exactly when the enemy's coming. He's not surprised by the enemy. The enemy is the one that's always surprised. God's never blindsided. God knew what you were going to go through before you went through it. God wasn't surprised by it. He's not alarmed by it. You might be alarmed, but he's not alarmed. He said, tomorrow they're coming, and here's where they're coming. Look, by the pass of Z's, and you will find them by the desert of Jaira. These two words mean the pass of Z's means... The, the place of bountifulness, the place of bountifulness and the desert of Jeruel means the desert in which the springs rise up. It means that where does the devil attack you? He attacks you at your place of your harvest and he attacks you at the place of your refreshing because he knows what God's about to do. He knows God's about to release harvests in your life and he knows he's about to release a blessing, a spring in the desert and he wants to come and steal that because he's not creative, he's not productive, he doesn't create, he doesn't make anything, he's not an entrepreneur, he's just a thief. He steals, he kills, and he destroys. Nothing new. If you know that the thief is coming, then you can turn the tables on the thief. 